Well, hello and welcome to this segment of Sister to Sister. We're so glad that you invited us in to be with you here on Real Life. And we bring the answers to the questions of the world from a biblical standpoint. Well, where do you hear this one and where do you hear our answers? Here we go. Hmm. Have you ever excused someone's bad behavior out of love? And how did you stop enabling them and in turn help them? Hmm. We just hmm. had this conversation. I normally won't talk about what we talked about in a green room. In fact, I try not to talk about the questions when we come in. But we were discussing about how, for me, coming up, you're taught family. And, you know, no matter what, family is family. So no matter what they do, you look out for them. So it doesn't matter what their behavior is, what their issues are, you are there for them because they're family. Well, when you have family that has, and everybody does, everybody has a, some dysfunction in their family and you learn how to function in your dysfunction. So let's say, for example, there's addiction in the family. You learn how, you love them because regardless if they're, alcoholic, uh, heroin addict, it's still your brother, your sister, your cousin, or whoever they are. So that love is innate, it's there. Um, but you find yourself enabling them because you think that it's love to give them housing, to give them money, yeah. to give them. And my answer to how do you stop enabling and help them? You must first get help. At least that's what happened to me. I had to be educated on what enabling was. I didn't realize I was an enabler. And once I got educated on it, then to have my village, if you will, or you know, um, some people around me to help me make those decisions that would bring change, mm -hmm. I found to be very effective. Mm -hmm. that's good. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I agree with Flo, and you can't make, if you, if you find yourself making excuses, you know, the scripture says love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that love ignores them. That's right. Love That's doesn't good. talk about them. Love doesn't uh, gossip about them. Love helps yes. them. So if we stop, if you find yourself making excuses for someone, instead of naming it what it really is, then you are an enabler. And we've probably all done it because we think we love someone yeah. so much, we want them to be, quote, perfect or that, that mm, great so person. Good. That person, and Flo said it before, they're going through their testimony. And yeah. I love the way she said that, that they are creating in life their testimony. So sometimes they need to fall in order to get up. The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times and Amen. gets up Amen. again. Yeah. So we have to encourage them in positive behavior not just make excuses for them. But I think it doesn't always have to be as serious a situation as addiction or mm -hmm. alcoholism. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I took the question as, okay, bad, someone else's bad behavior, and it could be your husband's behavior, or mm -hmm. I kind of look at my own bad behavior too. Like I don't like to throw stones at people. I like to look in the mirror. I mean, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. It's still an accountability issue. I think, mm -hmm. right, too, um, taking it out of the house, which is so like personal, but even in an organization, in a, in a company, in a business, I mean, there have been times where I thought, I'm gonna walk in love to my own hurt. Meanwhile, they're destroying, they, they can try to destroy the organization, they can try to destroy and devour the, the flock of God. And looking back, I thought, I should have addressed that and told them and this one that it, it could have saved a lot of lives That's in the process. Point. And so it, it's not, love isn't ignoring, love isn't hiding away, love is addressing, love is sitting down, love is sitting, having hard conversations that you don't want to have, but just trying mm -hmm. to do, nobody's perfect too, and nobody's going to get it right all the time. We're humans, we make mistakes, there are fallouts, there are hurts, but to the best of our ability before God, are we walking in the God kind of love and did we address what we needed to do in our in our world, in our sphere of influence? Right. right. Do you make excuses for bad behavior? Well, I do with my puppy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you and this puppy, I'm telling you, you got a puppy. Oh, you know this what? one goes, yay, I go, yes. oh, big deal. You know I'm what? sorry. This I'm is sorry. what my puppy did yesterday. My puppy got into blue food dye. Oh. And 
bit open a packet of blue food dye and got it all over the house. Oh. Okay, no. and oh. I did not make excuses for the puppy yesterday. Well, no, it's a puppy. <laughs> no, but your example where it doesn't have to be an addiction or something like right, that. Right. I think a good example of that is with um, kids in school. Like so many parents are just they just want to defend their kids and my kid right. would never do that and like their bad grades is the te are the teacher's fault and the teacher's not teaching. Where if you would just come alongside and partner with the school and the teacher, you could work to help your child in their weaknesses as opposed to defending your child who really does have a weakness and really does need your help in figuring out what they're, what they're not doing well as opposed to defending your child who's not doing their homework or not, you know, maybe needs glasses or maybe needs help, you know, paying attention better or maybe needs you to be more involved yeah, with them at home. Right. That is that's good. a perfect example of that where is. you're enabling them to not do well in school because you're defending their bad behavior. Oh my gosh, that's the good. sisters are an endless <laughs> supply. <laughs> Of advice. <laughs> we have lots of love for the Lord and lots of love for you. We'll see you next time.